Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Brethren, I would like us to rejoice and be glad in it. We give thanks to the name of the Lord Most High for this uh, opportunity. We thank Him for counting us worthy to be partakers of these great blessings. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that may His name be highly exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. If this is your first time of stumbling on this live broadcast, brethren, this is voice of authority. This is God's own platform for blessing lives, for changing lives uh, on Facebook. I want to congratulate you for being a partaker of this great opportunity. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that like never, like never before, today's broadcast shall be uh, great blessings to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, children of God, I welcome you to this platform of power. I welcome you to the to this platform of grace. I welcome you to the presence of God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord shall appear to us in his almightiness today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me quickly seize this opportunity to tell each and every one of you as you are joining us today as you are coming online, please, it is very, very, very important for us to please begin to share this live broadcast. I need you to make your platform uh, as a vessel for God to bring people to his presence. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as you do that, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that the blessings of God in your life shall begin to overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. So uh, let us quickly take this time out to invite our people to the presence of God. I pray for you that as you are doing that in this brand new week, uh, the book of remembrance of good things shall be opened for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, uh, children of God, please, shall we quickly take this time to begin to share uh, this live broadcast. I want to welcome the children of God as they are already coming in. Uh, Victor, Sister Victoria Fajana, Janet Odunisi, uh, Remy Uku, and Thomas Akinyemi Olani Wajua. God bless you, brother. Uh, Please, let us uh, please share this live broadcast as we are coming online. Let us please uh, allow some other people as well to enjoy the same grace that we are about to enjoy. And as you do that, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord shall visit you today in the mighty name of Jesus. So please, it is important for us to invite brethren to fellowship together, to pray together before the Lord God Almighty. Let us quickly do that. Let us quickly do that. And it shall be well with you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, also, as we are inviting our loved ones as we are bringing them to the presence of God. Uh, it, is pre it is very important for us to have uh, a bottle of water for prayers. This is what God commanded for us on Voice of Authority. And we have been doing it since in inception. 
We have been doing it since day one that we started this broadcast. We have been praying with water and uh, the Lord have performed series of signs and wonders that I cannot even remember. Countless of miracles he has performed because of uh, praying with this water. So please, I want to encourage you to please quickly get a bottle of water wherever you are. And if you cannot get a bottle of water, you can just, you know, get a cup of water. Just, you know, ensure that you have water in front of you. And let it be with you as we begin to pray together. And then you will begin to see the hand of God manifest. Uh, I do not want you to joke with the water for uh, this month. The, the business for this month is very, very important. So don't joke with uh, VOA water for the month of July. This is what you need to do. Immediately after the program, as you drink, you give to your household to drink, and then you sprinkle the rest of the water in your house. If you have a personal business place, please take part of this water to your shop or to your business place, to your office, and sprinkle in that office too. There are special angels on assignment uh, that the Lord often send to deliver the message of fulfillment. So, when you sprinkle this water in your house, in your business, in your place of business, in your office, this will be an attracting force. You know, this will bring them in and usher them in to deliver your good news. So, I do not want uh, any, any one of us to joke with uh, the water for, for this month. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that because of your faith, the Lord shall appear to you today to perform wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. So when you have that bottle of water ready before you, ensure that it is opened. Ensure that it is open. So as the word of life is coming, let the power in the word visit that water. And as you drink, the power and the word of God shall visit your life as well in the mighty name of Jesus. So uh, before we say opening prayers, I would like us to please share this live broadcast as many times as we can. Daddy Onodeko, thank you for yesterday, sir. Thank you for that VIP visit. You know, when you have uh, uh, a guest like Daddy Onodeko visiting you then... <laughs> You are blessed. So I, I appreciate this grace of God. And I appreciate the load of prayers upon me and my household. And I pray for you, sir. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Another call. We love you. Thank you, sir. Uh, please, uh, I am invite. I am uh, welcoming every one of you. Thank you for joining, Mommy Grace Arrow Shebe. Thank you for joining, Adibanke Abolani. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, the topic that we want to treat today is very powerful. Ibitan loloni ni agbara. Like I told us, this is our month of fulfillment. Fulfillment of destiny, fulfillment of prophecy. A lot of people have received different prophecies, different forms of prophecies, but yet you have not encountered your change. Your life has been the same. Now, you are now beginning to doubt, is God still existing? So today, before I even begin to talk to you about what what uh, fulfillment means. Before I begin to tell you the meaning of fulfillment or what you need to do for the power of God or the prophecy of God to, to, to meet fulfillment in your life, before we begin to look at that, we want to look at the causes of prophecy failure. message. When you encounter your prophet and then they prophesy into your life or they see a vision towards your advancement and they say, oh, this is what God told me about you. This is what God showed me about you that you will become this, that you will become that. And then the time came 
and nothing happened. And then you begin to wonder, is God still talking or are there still prophets of God? What may be the reason when they give a man prophecy and then the, the prophecy refused to come to fulfillment? That is what we are looking at today. Please, I don't want you to joke with this topic. Today's topic has been, you know, divinely ordained to set you free. To this topic, today's topic, according to what I heard from the Spirit of God, is for a particular family. There is a particular family out there that is almost giving up. There is an individual out there. There is somebody that is watching us out there. You are almost giving up. You are fed up of the whole thing. Now, going to church now, you, you don't even derive pleasure going to church anymore. At the at the you don't you no longer derive pleasure going to church. Now, even the little times that you go to church, you go to church because of what people will say. So that they will not begin to question you. Come about soil and look at oh my you met that at ringy. So you go to church to prevent what people will say. That is why you go. You no longer derive pleasure fellowshipping in the presence of God again. Because everything that has been said to you by the mouth of God is yet to come to fulfillment. So what could be the reason? Kinong to man fa. Kode jishafu nyokwe bai nyoluwa wi. Kode man she. You know, when the prophet says and said, Thus say yet the Lord, the Lord, not a man, does say yet the Lord, and yet it refused to come to fulfillment. This is the very important topic that we are looking at today. So, when our understanding is open, when we receive power, when we are now in the know about why prophecies don't quickly come to fulfillment, then we will now begin to look at what is fulfillment. What can we do? To hasten up the power of fulfillment in our lives. This is the topic that we are looking at today. I pray that this topic shall be a blessing to you and to your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, because I want it to sink. So I do not want to bore us too much. And then intermittently, in between the topic, we are going to be praying some powerful prayers. So I don't want you to miss it. If you have any friend or maybe your brother, your sister, or any of your siblings that is passing through tough times, that is almost giving up, that is now doubting the efficacy of the power of God or doubting the existence of God himself, I need you to personally invite them. Please call them that I need you to listen to this brother. Listen, there are some situations you don't need to fast. You don't need to pray to get out of such situations. All that you need is to receive divine wisdom and divine instruction. I want I want to so what we have come what i have come to 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 deliver to you today is the way out out of prophecy failures shall we pray heavenly father we glorify your name we thank you for what you have been doing on voice of authority we thank you for what you shall do again today. We decree in the mighty name of Jesus that you shall personally descend to speak to us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I sanctify my mouth with the blood of Jesus and I decree that the fire of authority will begin to burn upon my tongue today in the name of Jesus. As I pray for your people, as I release authority and prophecies into the lives of your people, Lord, today it shall find fulfillment in their lives. In the name of Jesus, every by the power in the name of Jesus, I decree in the name of Jesus that mighty man that is standing on your way, blocking your way, 
preventing you to move forward. I decree that the fire of God should conceive them right now. In the name of Jesus, I, I release authority into the water in your hand. Let it turn to the blood of Jesus. I decree that water, I command that water to become a solution provider. In the name of Oya Ebo, I decree ah, your long due joy, joy that is overdue, that you have been expecting for a long time. By the reason of this live broadcast, because you are watching me right now, I command joy, that joy, to be released into your life, into your house, into your marriage. In the name of Jesus, let Lord, I decree in the lives of your people, among the list, in the list of those that shall fall from grace to grass, in this week and in this month, your name is exempted. Thank you, King of Glory, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Children of God, I welcome you to this moment of power, and I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord shall by himself personally speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to uh, first apologize for not being available on Thursday. I was on a missionary journey to Pennsylvania for about four days. We were in Pennsylvania for four days, praying and fasting, and then holding vigil throughout four days. As you can see, uh, I'm almost losing my voice. So I want to uh, apologize for not being here on Thursday, it is because of the spiritual journey. I prayed for uh, every uh, viewers of Voice of Authority there, and I'm also praying for you here that onto what to tutorial and will program you, what you are trusting God for that makes you not to be missing this program between now and the next seven days. The the Lord that called me, the power and the grace of my calling will release it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. So today we are looking at uh, causes of prophecy uh, failure. We cannot talk about fulfillment without looking at what are the things, you know, that debar or that hinders fulfillment in the lives of of the children of God. So we are looking at causes of prophecy failure. Before looking at causes of prophecy failure, we want to look at the meaning of prophecy itself. And the grace of God has helped me to give you two simple meanings, two simplest meanings of prophecy that you can come across. So we want to look at what is prophecy itself. Number one, prophecy is the voice of God that is released through his anointed men. Voice of God that is released through anointed vessel uh, to an individual, to a family, to a city, to a nation, or to the world. So let me let me repeat myself once one more time. What is prophecy? Prophecy is the voice of God. So in other words, what we are saying is that the prophecy, uh, the man that is releasing uh, that prophecy is not subjected to the fulfillment of the prophecy. The man that is releasing or giving out that prophecy is nothing but a vessel. It's only a vessel, a medium through which that prophecy is coming. Every prophecy, every true prophecy is what? The voice of God. Many at times, uh, a lot of us are not in the right frame of mind to hear hear the direct voice of God. Even uh, 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 in the book of Exodus, when the Lord descended to speak to the Israelites, when they saw the terror and the, uh, uh, and the power in the, in the presence of God, they could not wait. They said, Moses, you go and be listening to God and whatever God told you, come back to tell us. So because of fear, because of this terror, God has chosen some vessels. God has chosen some instruments. God has chosen some anointed vessels that are referred to as prophets to be speaking to us mouth to mouth. So prophecy is the voice of God that is released through his anointed vessels to an individual. What we are saying is that prophecy is not limited to one person alone that is released, either to an individual, either to a family, either to a city, either to a nation, or to a world. So there are levels in prophecy. 
so fun itile a le so fun didi ilu a le so fun orilede a de le so fun agbaye i decree in the mighty name of jesus the prophecy that has been spoken to your life that is yet to be fulfilled because of this by the reason of this live broadcast i command instantaneous fulfillment in the name of jesus oni awon aso tele kan ta ti so sinu e bi e oni awon aso tele kan ta ti so sinu itile re that are some prophecies that has been spoken to your family that are some sp- prophecies that has been spoken to your marriage and they are yet to be fulfilled i stand on the rock of ages and i decree by the reason of the presence of God right now that that prophecy will begin to come to fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. Secondly, what is prophecy? Prophecy is the written word of God. The written word of God that is personalized, claimed, and honestly expected to manifest. The written word of God. Word of God. So, many times, Prophecy is not spiritual messages that you re- that you that you that you receive from the mouth of prophets alone. At times, when you are reading the word, when you are reading the word of God, when you read or you meditate on the word of God, at times some word will we particularly minister to your situation. You have been reading that verse. You have been reading that chapter. You know that verse off and you know it. But that is this particular day. You are reading that particular verse of the scripture. And uh, while reading it, then it was like God is speaking to you through that verse. You just, you receive that verse with an uncommon conviction. You receive that, you read that verse that day. It was as if the verse was jumping to your face. You, re- you read that verse that day. And it was as if the verse was to- is speaking to your present predicament. Anytime you encounter that, listen, it is the prophecy of God that that is coming live and direct to you through the word that is being read through the Bible. I must speak to somebody. So uh, there are different ways by which the destiny of man is being exposed to the power of prophecy. Many a times people may be running, men, even children of God may be running from pillar to post looking for whom to prophesy into their lives. Many times you don't need nobody to release prophecy into your life. All that you need is to get yourself seated. Sit down. Read the word of God. Begin to meditate until you come across the particular word of God for your situation. Listen to this reality. For every predicament that you are passing through, for every situation that you are passing through, for every challenges that you are facing or is facing you, there is at least one word in the Bible that can destroy that challenge. Am I speaking that to, to somebody now? Fumbubu idotu koto ulema dotu ko fumbubu la la ti damuto ulema la koja at least the verse in the Bible that you don't need to bear a lot of fear. We still show you. The reason why that problem is still persisting is because you have not actually sat down, you have not sat down to open the word of God, the inspired word of God, in expectation, in anticipation of the miracle that the word will perform in your life. So the second definition of prophecy is the written word of God that is personalized. Now, when you read, when you read the Bible, when you read the word of God, and you want that word of God to act as prophecy and to work as prophecy and to be fulfilled as prophecy in your life, you need to personalize it. Don't read it like you are reading Bible in the congregation. Don't read it like you are reading a novel. Don't read it like you are reading a newspaper. You have to personalize it. When you encounter that word, something must jump for joy inside your heart that, oh, this is the word. This is my word. So the word of God that is personalized. Now, after personalizing it, you have to move to the next level. What is the, that level that is claimed? The, the written word of God that is, number one, personalized. Number two, that is claimed. Personalizing the word of God is not enough. Personalizing it, oh, I read a particular verse. And I know that that verse is speaking to me. Personalizing it is not enough. You have to claim it. You have to be, you have to continue to talk about it. You have to continue to decree. You have to continue to say it into your life until it is fulfilled. 
Je ke gbogbo eyan mo mu e pe o ni apa abi kan ninu bibeli to ma so to ma so je ke won so elenu to ba ti danu le bayi won ti mo bi to ti ma bere won ti ma bi to ti ma pari esi am i speaking to somebody now you have to constantly and on a regular basis ah claim that prophecy and speak it into your life so prophecy is the written word of god that is personalized that is claimed and the last that is honestly expected to manifest you personalize it you claim it and then you expect it a lot of us just claim the word of god by mouth not by heart when you claim it every time into your life into the life of your children into your marriage then you begin to expect it you you, you begin to live a life of expectation that what i have been claiming must be man must come to manifestation i pray for somebody wo gbo oro to ti ba pade ninu bibeli to de gba gbo ni pa ipe ire gan lo lorun ba wi ti o de ti wa si imose ni pa gbara ifami ororo yan ton sise lowo oro yen ko wa si imose i release into the life of somebody every word of god that you have encountered in the scriptures and you have claimed it into your life and they are yet to come to manifestation by the power of the anointing that is working now let that let those prophecies begin to come into manifestation in the name of Jesus so that is that about that we are going to the next uh, to the next uh, level of the teaching i told you i don't want to bore you i don't want to waste your time i am going straight on point today now the next stage of the teaching is do you know that there are two types of prophecies there are two kinds of prophecy, two kinds of prophecies. Yes, as number one is what you call evil prophecy. As I am telling somebody that Joe, if you are just joining us and you are yet to share this live broadcast, I want you to quickly do it now. Please, I beseech, I need you to quickly do it. There is somebody that will check your Facebook wall now. I will come across this teaching. And this teaching is the solution that that person needs from his problem or for a problem. So I need you to share it now. And there are some people that are watching me right now. They have shared the live broadcast, but I need you to share it again. Why do you need to share it again? It is because as many as the people, as many as the number of people that sees this live broadcast on the wall, so is the amount of people that will come to rejoice with you before the end of this month in the name of Jesus? He did to share no that two video and share the be. Oh yeah, your top back but they to read through the Facebook where he yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah. Be na miru oh yeah yeah. To mawa ba e sha jojo ki o shui to pari for as many that sees this live broadcast on your wall on your Facebook wall. Yes, that is the number of people that the Lord will raise to come and felicitate with you, to come and rejoice with you before the end of this month. So, I need you to share now. Now, I told us there are two kinds of prophecy. Two kinds. You may not know before, but you are knowing now. You know now. Two kinds of prophecy. Number one, we have evil prophecy. Edosa, asotele ibiwa. Edosa, asotele ibiwa. All around them, I'm fired by that is what you call evil prophecy. And God allows it. Honestly. Honestly. Many times, God allows it. If you don't know what you are doing, and you open your eyes, and you allow your destiny to receive evil prophecy, God will allow it until you come to your right senses, and then you begin to reject it. But, because of the reason of this live broadcast. I need to make you to understand that that is what you call evil prophecy. Evil prophecy. For example, you know, I will not, I will not tell you uh, a thing without, without uh, uh, looking uh, up for it in the scriptures. Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22, verse 5. We, we will begin to pray now. We will begin to pray now. So I want you to stay attentive. Numbers chapter 22, uh, from verse 5. He sent messengers unto Balaam, the son of Beer, to Peter. <laughs> Balak sent messenger unto Balaam, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, 
Therefore, I pray thee, cause me these people, for they are too mighty for me. Balak sent message to Balaam. He invited Balaam to come, knowing fully well that Balaam was a prophet of God. Balaam is a tested, during his time, he was a tested and trusted prophet. When Balaam tells you or and he, he prophesies to you that it is going to rain at 3 o'clock, don't doubt it, exactly 3 o'clock it will rain. Such is the power and the efficacy of his prophecy. Now, this particular king, this particular king, whose name is Balak, began to envy the greatness in the life of the Israelites. And he thought of himself, what can we do to limit them? Hey, Doma, one man fear, so tell a woman fear, dear you. He has tested and tried everything in his confinement. Everything, every power he has tested, but the power refused to work on Israel. And he said, the only thing that we can do is to look for a prophet that believed in the same God that they believed in to cause them, to limit them. decree in the name of Jesus. I will say it in English. Whoever that sees uh, your expansion, whoever that is envious of your progress, of your expansion, and is looking for people or has sent for people, contracted people to cause you, to, so as to limit you, I decree by the power in the name of Jesus that such causes will begin to return back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. In the name of Jesus, let us read the scripture more. <sighs> for they are too mighty, they are too mighty. Hey, for adventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land, that I may drive them out of the land. They were not on his land, though, but he saw that their land was fruitful. So he engaged the service of a prophet to cause them, so that he may drive them out of their own land. Who is that prophet that has been contacted and contracted to drive you out of your promised land? Who is that prophet that they gave your name to, that they gave your picture to, to send you out of that marriage? I decree now, let the grave begin to call them to attention now. In the name of Jesus, he said, come and curse them for me so that I can take their land. I want to pursue them out of that land. I need that land. I decree there is a place where you are making it. There is a place where you are making your money. There is a particular place where God is blessing you. Maybe your job, maybe your work, maybe your business, maybe your husband is the, is the source of your blessing. Who is that man or woman that is seeking, devising a means to chase you out of your promised land? Let the fire of God begin to consume them right now as I speak. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us read, let us read. Hmm. That he whom, for I wot that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. Hey, did we listen to that? For I what is it means? For I found out, for I have discovered, prophet, I have discovered that any man that you bless is blessed, and any man that you curse is cursed. <laughs> Woli la ran se ibi yo eyin wo li o si ten gbo mi ten wo mi lowo lowo ina ma jo yin o eyin wo li ka eyin ton fi se ibi ran lati bayan laye je anointing tin yo gbe eyan sokeri afi ko la eyan mole yes your prophecy never lifts people but to destroy people eyin wo li eyin wo li to pe ise buruku wa lowo yin eyin o mo ise bo se so yan dalabuku fun you don't know the spiritual work or prayers to do that will turn a man to a millionaire under one month. But you know what to do that will turn a millionaire to a pauper under 12 hours. Ah, 
bo ba ngbo mi lowo ibinu olorun ati ebi olorun ma woli e bayi lo ni as i speak in the mighty name of jesus egbon to ba yen so listen to what that king said he said i have i have found out i have made my research and i found out about your anointing that any man that you bless is blessed and any man that you cause is caused so because of this we have found out we have made our research that prophecies from your mouth never fails. Come and help us to curse these people. Mo badwa taleni taran sheiku si ayire. Oni sheiku olara lati fi ku pae tomo tomo. Oni sheiku olara lati fi ku pae taya taya ati eme na. Mo badwa lor ko Jesus oya ko fi ku yen parai 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 ko fi ku yen parai. Let him die by his sword. Let him die by his word. Let him die by his word. In the name of Jesus. Now, Kotosibe, verse 7, And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination, Ibe in their hands. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. The reward of divination. The reward of divination, not the reward of prophecy. Oh, or or on jadi, right? Or on jadi. The elders of the land rose to meet the prophet with the reward of divination, not the reward of prophecy. I want no more when she tell on Pharaoh, he shall be me, and they came with a reward. Be to bad try or a big belly, to a bad word, fee or a fake coffee, tendy. I'm not speaking to somebody now. They, they, they came to the prophet. We know that you have the anointing, but we, we have demonic power. Mix it together. That is why there are a lot of prophets in town, so-called prophets. They call themselves prophets. Listen, they are glorified abalists, advanced abalists. They are not prophets. They are using reward of divination that is sent to them. They are not using prophecy. Divination, they won't know. That is why more pity and yenya. A papa in two will eat a ballot Facebook. One shall not buy. I want only only don't let what you are all looking for. Prophet sharp sharp. Prophet that will tell you on phone, Madam, yesterday you ate rice and egg and you took Fanta. I say, Jay, 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 never told why ye and Debbie say, Rice ya ten ye at your Fanta to Mushon Lora ye and Nilo. And you begin to say, Ah, that prophet is saying in and out. Imagine I took Fanta yesterday and rice and egg and he told me. People are no longer seeking for word. They are seeking for vision. Oh, people are no longer seeking for the efficacy of the power of the word of God. They are seeking one wa agbara olorun mo one wa asotele mo one wa dura mo iran ni one wa eni to ma so iran fun won. Iran gbogbo iran to den so fun eno ko ni solution ni no. I must speak to somebody. They keep telling you vision, 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 vision without solution. They are not prophet, they are diviners. Allah for she ni won one way to me, one she will leave. I must speak it to somebody now. Talk about Debbie or Kabara was so why? Because I, I am covering myself with the blood of Jesus now. But when it's your own, you bam bidding up here on to a shirt to the big one. I fear me a lie at a one way. I feel D. It is time we need to we need to liberate people. We need to liberate people. We need to liberate the Bible says they came with the reward of divination. So they were actually expecting him to, to practice divination with the anointing upon his head. Add divination with anointing. Listen, listen. You went to consult a prophet, and the prophet is telling you to go and bring a jarro. A jarro kill a jarro in English. What is a jarro now? Ah, oh, kill my catfish. Catfish, I remember. You went to meet a prophet to pray for you for blessing. And he told you to go and buy catfish that they want to use a jaw. Say, Mose lo lo ejo aroni. I be like ja, I be like sha. I be Jesus lo, I be Paul apostle. Mbo ti buy she a year there on the Coloma me jaroa. Oh yeah, go to my quarter to one labor phone. Am I speaking to somebody now? Am I speaking to somebody now? They are using divination for you. You went to meet a prophet. Church lo tu ti lo ba. Inye mi o bo bo inye ay saize ni o. I met I met him in his church. If you see the church, oh, if you see Bible, big Bible on the table, oh, they are just they are only cajoling you. 
You went to meet a prophet and they told you this thing, we are going to use catfish for you. We are going to use catfish. We are going to use yam. We are going to use yam. I become mummy low at the milk. See, you know, a lot of people, a lot of you are the one tempting prophet to deceive you. To deceive you, go and bring this. They are asking you to go and bring what you know that it is diabolical, but because you want to get out of that problem fast, fast, you didn't even bother to think. A lot of you are looking for profit fast, fast. And that is why most people are dying prematurely today. Because the blessing that you are supposed to enjoy at the age of 40, then they fast forward it to you. You are already enjoying it at the age of 21. So when you have exhausted that blessing at the age of 25, there is nothing for you to be waiting to, to live for. There is nothing for you to live for. So the angels of God will just come and they kill that person. Because of prophet fast fast. They, they, they will look at you. They want to do everything for you fast fast. Evil prophets with evil prophecy. A lot of you have been deceived on Facebook. A lot. A, the easiest way to capture people and deceive them nowadays is the social media. They are using the power of divination. Because in the mighty name of the the body for the You are in a shrine. You are in a white garment shrine or court shrine, but costa shrine. That is where you are. You are not in a church. So a lot of you are the reason for it. When you see people, many are times when people come to me, I pray to them, release professor, release power. And I said, go in peace. And then they turn back and they say, ah, any vision. Are you not telling me vision? Listen, if God has showed me something about you, you are not the one that will tell me. I'm not a moron. I'm not stupid. If the Lord has shown me something about you, you are not the one that will tell me any vision. So when you go to meet the prophet and they pray for you, and God did not show or reveal anything. Let him just use it, anoint it to authorize and believe it and go and do good. But by the time you start lowly nephew, twisting his intestine, let me use that English. You begin to twist his intestine, interrogate the prophet, any vision. The prophet will say, hmm, well, yeah, hmm. Offer one, offer one divination, offer person, so film for the end. And then they begin to tell you the film, they begin to tell you the film until they defraud you. It is not their fault, it is your fault. I must speak to somebody now. Who born in you? I ain't no le wa e de mo ipe kosi bi ari na shele sare to Allah dua lo gari na. I must speak to somebody now. Allah dua he that can pray is the master of he that can only see vision. Allah dua on ti a dua ma shele ari she du kan la ari ten years in round ti le she. I must speak to somebody now. What prayer we do for you on that? What prayers we do for you on that one day? Ten years, vision has not done it. Because vision will reveal, that is the name vision. Vision will reveal, it will show you this is the problem. But vision will not tell you solution. And Nick Bobo on the Facebook, they will tell you, uh-uh, I can see white cotton. I can see white cotton. I be cutting white yen. I can see white cotton. Ah, ah, kill my way. Any TV Panasonic won't be sorry. K white one of the ah, we need to relay our budget. We need to relay our budget. TV white in your tone, your Panasonic in your Yamaha and Italy. You want to mama so fun. What to my fun? What my flow? Yamaha and Italy. So, what about the last week's Panasonic? They'll begin to tell you all, all kinds of visions. They are not prophets, they are using divination. Want to see your Jew? And they begin to tell you. And at the end of the day, they tell you, okay, go and bring that 5000 Go and bring $500. Go and bring $1,000. And they give you one powder. So the powder I work on my lap. 
that is the end. And you, you have been leaking powder for how many years now? There is no solution. They give you vision. They don't have solution. But when you encounter the, the, the prayer warrior, to Baba Woli Allah do a party. If God reveal it, and if you believe to the tough solution, hello, what they don't know about your instantly. I'm not speaking to somebody. So in your book, may the Lord deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. So uh there is what we call evil, evil, evil prophecy. Let me buttress that point with one verse. Let me buttress that 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 same numbers chapter 23. We are looking at verses 1 and 2. Numbers chapter 23, we are looking at verses 1 and 2. And Balaam said unto Balak. <laughs> Balaam, Balaam was now, was the one now, now talking to Balak. Because he has tried prophecy and is not working. Once we have a tower labor, by right? a tower labor. Balaam said to the king, Balak, he said, Build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven lambs. Egg pepper made JCB. Egbe agbo me jesibi, egbe oxy me jesibi, eta jesile ti fe wonwe. Mba toro lon wo shishema, am I speaking to somebody now? They want to use blood now. He said, build me seven altars. I am speaking to somebody that is watching me now. Every evil altars, every evil altar or altars that is erected to bring you down. They erected that order, altar in order to bring you down. I command the thunder of God, the thunder, thunder of vengeance from the throne of God to bring down such altar. In the name of Jesus, he said, build me seven altars. Now, verse 2, and Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. Go and look at the animal. You want to the bullock? They erected seven altars. And on every altar, they were sacrificing a bullock and a ram and oxen. Bullock, ram, oxen. Bullock, ram, oxen. On all the seven altars, they began, they began to spill blood because they wanted to cause one nation. What to war labor for Israeli? Let's say, let's say, so Bobo, big Bobo, he best set up a bay. He was back back around Israeli though. So, cause he already want to sign it to the army at the end. Cause he will best set. He want to be need to the army at the end. Cause he should share. It will not be effective. It will not be effective in the name of Jesus. Now, before I go to the next point, I love this place. That same numbers, please mark back me. It is very easy to remember. Numbers twenty three, twenty three. But adventure, you forget some of the quotations that I'm giving to you today. Please don't forget this particular one. Numbers 23, 23. Now listen. When Balaam and Balak are finished with their sacrifice, the Spirit of God, the true Spirit of God, now came on Balaam and he began to prophesy. Now, the prophecy was to reveal into public what they did in private. The prophecy, the spirit of God, the true spirit of God descended on Balaam and he began to prophesy. Why did God allow that? So that they can confess what they did in public. In verse 23, they said, Surely, Odaju, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. So, get in Surely, there is no enchantment against Jacob and no divination against Israel. That was the prophecy that was coming out of his mouth. Meaning that they have practiced enchantment. Enchantment are for share. No enchantment and no divination. We are for share. What they be for Jade. An enchantment in Yoruba is a for share. A for share divination is like a far. So when he was prophesying, he was saying it by his own mouth that surely no enchantment against Jacob and no divination against Israel. Meaning that he has practiced the two things. 
just to cause Israel and it did not work. Every enchantment against you and me, every enchantment against your life, against my life, every enchantment against your marriage, against my marriage, every divination against your children and my children, I command it to return back to sender. Bubuisha for share, bubuisha e pe, bubuisha e gun, bubuisha ti mo be kale, bubuisha babalawo, bubuisha wolika ti mo be kale. Because of you and I, I command it now to return back to sender, to return back to sender. To return back to sender in Jesus' name, we are praying. Uh, while I was praying for you, I remember somebody that I know. A lot of people may know the person, so I'll just say somebody. I remember somebody that I know. He used to be blessed, he has money, but he was facing, he was passing through some challenges. The person was a celestial, he was passing through some challenges. And when and he told the over to you will not tell it. So he could not cope because so woman be to tell it. He now went to Badagri. I'm not, I'm not saying evil. To people from Badagri, he went to a place, okay, he went to a place to meet a prophet. And the prophet told that uh, person, I will not tell you if it's woman or man, I'm trying to be very careful here. The prophet told that person to go and get golden fish. Go and get gold fish. You know gold fish now very expensive. And the man went to get gold fish. And they used this gold fish and some other things. They used it for prophetic, in quote, work for this brother. And when they gave it to him to go and use, immediately he began to, to be blessed. Not knowing that gold fish is expensive, but it doesn't last long. It has a short lifespan. So he began to bait with this soap. What if she had you want to fish she or not now? What if she had she chef when you went to a prophet, they told you to hold water in cup, and they began to pray, and the water in the cup begin to bring bubble like hot water poo, 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 poo. and you are saying ah prophet yeah bono i hear no hold up you me oh them oh man say elijah that is not that is not miracle it is magic we have seen a lot what have we not seen they told you kneel down put water in cup for you and they are praying for you they are praying for you and while they are praying for you that water Begin to bring out bubble, like like it is on a pot, like it's on a cooking pot. Begin to bring out the water. Began to bring out smoke and bubbles, and you are happy. And after that, they told you to drink and to go and bathe with it. Oh my God, if I hear we done, just because you want hot profit. So this person that I'm talking about bathe with his soap, and money was rushing in. Money. He didn't spend that money up to four years. He died a mysterious death. He died prematurely. That is what a lot of you are looking for. That is what a lot of you are looking for. May the Lord deliver you from their hands in the name of Jesus. So there are two kinds of prophecy. There is what you call evil prophecy. Who are the ones that release evil prophecies? Of course, evil prophets. And there is what you call... Uh, well, I know this is Mommy Fashola, Rondo Rondo, magical prophet. <laughs> yes, I want Rondo Rondo, less superior, not Rondo Rondo prophet. You know them now, you know them. A lot of people cannot pray again. Mark pray Nigeria for me. Any Mark pray Nigeria for me. Cut up before you come apart in the mighty name of Jesus. But you, you cannot even talk to God anymore. So, um, that is what you call evil prophecy. And that's what you call good prophecy. At the evil prophecy. At the good prophecy. Now we want to look at reason. When they prophesy into your life. That at the age of 25. This is what you will become. At the age of 30. This is what you will become. At the age of 50. This is what you will become. Or they give back to a baby. In your household. And they say ah. This is the glory of this family. Through this child, everybody shall be blessed. And the child that was supposed to be the glory of the family was going up as the poorest, like was going up or is going up as a pauper. What may be the reason? I mean, this is a prophet from this is a prophecy from true prophets, from 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 true men of God. They prophesied, and yet it is not coming into fulfillment. What may be the reason? Don't forget, we are in our month of fulfillment. We are in our month of fulfillment of destiny. That is why we are looking at what are those things that is causing prophecies not to be fulfilled in our lives as Christians. 
I want to begin to I may genuine they are seven and I'll quickly tell you I will bring the program to 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 a close. But before I begin to tell itemize them one by one, can you please share this video at least three times? I would like you to share this live broadcast again three times. If you obey and share it three times, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus, the hand of blessings of the Lord shall never cease in your life. Go back back, but oh, they share video in their mention. Oh, what no ati bukolono koni koni no ayere. In the name of Jesus, I am praying for those that will share this live broadcast at least three times now. I decree every evil hand that is raised up because of you. I decree in the name of Jesus, the power of God shall cut them into pieces. But but why be your tabak beso ke ni tori tiye? We know my Joe in the oh my binosono in the mighty name. Of Jesus, so we are looking at number one. Number one reason of prophecy failure is what I call fraudulent prophecy. Fraudulent prophecy. Number one reason for prophecy failure is what I call prophetic fraud. Prophetic fraud is the number one reason of prophecy failure. There are some prophecy. If you wait for them. From this time to 50 years, it will not come to fulfillment because the prophecy was released out of a fraudulent act. Ofegeni, a sotele ofegi. I want sotele ta agbe so di te puti o lese. Kole she. I must speak it to somebody now. You went to a particular church and they told you to need that. And they begin to prophesy the sweet tongue you. They are telling you what you want to hear. They tell you a lot. What call you a kum? They tell you this, 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 this. And then you, you, you dropped your money. You gave them money and you went back home happily. You are expecting it to come to fulfillment. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. None of the prophecy is yet to be fulfilled. Why? It is a prophetic fraud. Fraudulent prophecy. What do I mean by fraudulent prophecy? It is fraudulent prophecy is a prophecy that is released out of greed and worldly gain. Out of greed and worldly gain in order to defraud the victim. Am I might speak to somebody now? What is fraud? Um, I will give you the definition. All these things, I didn't see it nowhere. I just sat down and the Lord was ministering to me and I was writing it down. Number one reason for prophecy failure is what we call prophetic fraud. A certain LGBT. And what is what is fraudulent prophecy? It is a kind of prophecy that is released out of greed and worldly gain to defraud the victim. You went to their church in your under pilot 2018. They didn't even know if it was your friend's pilot. They didn't know if it was a rental car. They didn't know if you borrowed the car. They didn't know who owns the car. But before, because they saw you in under pilot 2018, as you are stepping out of the pilot, before you entered into the church, they began to prophesy. Bo, o golong wale boy, bo, o wo lari le nye, bo, wo awo maleka ton fi ye wo nwe. Look at the angel, angel cleaning your body with their wing. Wo na oku wow, bo, heavenly VIP lo de yi. Well, one girl to tell you, well, let's talk about briefcase here, Danny. You say, wow. What is it by him? M. Esma. Trailer of it by him. They told you, hey, as you are coming in, I saw divine angels carrying your briefcase. And you believe such. You believe. They told you, ah, we saw divine angels coming with you with their wings. They begin to clean you. How They tell you abstract things. They tell you things that is too difficult to believe. Just to capture your mind. They work on your mind. Because they do, they have not received from God. So what they do is to work on your mind. Based on what they are saying. If they see a lot of rings in your hand, they will tell you, Ah, Emma Malo, gold ring, silver ring, silver ring, silver ring. How? It is because of what they see with you, that they used to work on your mind. How do you know that? They walk on your mind and then they instill fear. They plant fear into your heart. How do you know fraudulent prophets or, or, or prophetic fraud or fraudulent prophecy? How do you know any prophecy that is working on your mind? 
Any prophecy that is being revealed based on your outward appearance or any prophecy that brings fear into your heart. Only a dead chicheto and rudebres in by hey, Baba Kinema Shori. Ah, Toba Loleleni, trailer, no dueleg, but over Shubu. Tanka Lari to Veshubu, Lori Bridge, your leg by Ah, Mubi, Una Longbe, O Moli Loleo, Kinikon, they say, Ah, is she a a jatanka e la machine for him? I must speak to somebody now. They will tell you, is she is she a jatanka e? You ah, what is she? Ah, is she a jatanka e? No, my woe, tanka e, but they come out in Lori. Ah, what do we do now? Eh, we will call Jalu Tanka seven times. Jalu Tanka, Jalu Tanka, Jalu Tanka seven times. And you bring this and bring this. One Jalu Tanka is 50,000 naira. And times seven, <laughs> Madame and Timurite, my son. And because you are afraid, nobody wants to die under for it, uh, under a trailer now. They take 350,000 from you free of charge. And that is it. <laughs> Me only go. I'm not speaking to somebody now. Fraudulent prophecy will never come to fulfillment. So before you begin to blame God, before you begin to say there is no prophet in that church anymore, Jare, you are so telling will not suffer or else my you shall let you be done, it will let be done, shake Jenny, a be or talk. How do you know them? Advert, oh my, take what George Allah, their demonstration. Their demonstration will be more than the prophets, prophecy that they want to release. If Polo Waja, the advert will be more than the product. You sit before the prophets and you say, like, oh, do you want to do it? Could you call me? Could you call me? Could you call me? She will leave again. To Bati Riru, what? Tomatiri want drama lunch, you want to make buy him. The advert is too much, more than the product. They want to defraud you. So, what is the reason behind prophecy failure? Number one is what you call prophetic fraud. Prophecy that is released with the intention to defraud the victim. They did not hear from God. God did not even know them. As a matter of fact, they cannot even recognize the voice of God. God have never spoken to them in their life. They have never seen a single vision in their life, but they work on your mind. They are like philosophers. They work on your mind. Number four, how do you know? They throw indirect question to you. They throw indirect question. You are before prophet and he's asking you, we call them question and answer prophet. Question and answer. They'll be telling you how many wives do you your father have. If you are a prophet, you should know how many wives my father have. I've been a victim of that before when I was in school. If you if you are a prophet, you should be able to tell your father has five wives, three wives, one wife. Don't ask me stupid question. I mean, Jyoti Mari be. What a pair I will leave. One only, ah, Jyoti Mari, should not call you and she buy. What a funny, what a funny clue. You have given him a clue. Uh, uh, I, I, I am married or I was married, but something happened. The next thing, every prophecy that I will be telling you will be about marriage because he have, he have, he will be able to design, he have seen that you have marital failure. I'll be telling you, go and bring this, go and bring that. They will be asking you indirect question to get direct answer from you. Quiz master prophets. I'm not speaking to somebody now. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm not speaking to somebody. So that is the number one reason for prophecy failure. Because in the beginning or at first, the prophecy was not even genuine. What's the time? I just spent one hour. I have 30 minutes more to spend on this live broadcast today. Then we'll come, I will come again on Thursday, like I promised last week. Because the issue of fulfillment is a very powerful one. So I will suspend Celestial World on Thursday and we'll continue with Voice of Authority. So we will continue on Thursday. Well, let me give us, let me spend just about 20 or 28 minutes with us now before we meet again on Thursday by the special grace of God. Number two reason for prophecy failure. Number two reason for prophecy failure is lack of trust and confidence in God's prophets as a result of your previous experience or experiences. Lack of trust and confidence in God's genuine prophets as a result of your past experiences. A lot of you have encountered fake prophets. A lot of you have received fake prophecies. A lot of you have even attended fake churches. And because of this, you have lost total trust in everything that is spiritual. 
you have lost total confidence in prophets and prophecies. And as a result, when you eventually come across the genuine ones, when you eventually come, come across the real prophets and they prophesy into your life, you receive it with a heart of unbelief. It will not come to fulfillment until the day you begin to believe what they tell you. I hope you are getting this reality that is coming to you live and direct today. Number two reason why some prophecies is not coming to fulfillment is because you receive it with a heart of unbelief because of your previous experiences with fake prophets. So anytime you encounter the true prophets and they begin to minister to your life, the only thing that is in your hand is, I want to today, they have come again. That is how they do. You now see every prophet, even the genuine ones, you now see them as the same. If you carry that mentality that we, we are now in a world of fake prophets, if you carry that mentality about to encounter fulfillment in your life will be difficult. I tell people, anybody could see Wolima, the family house, one lot of one condition, final barrier for me. There are prophets, there are real prophets. So if you go about, some people will be telling, hey, hey, <laughs> anybody that call themselves prophet, you better don't listen to them. Yeah, that is how you will not listen to them until you will encounter the, the real one that God has sent to you. Now, the prophetic ministry is now so bastardized to the essence that even we that are prophet are now, you know, at times you feel so ashamed to address yourself as prophet. Many times when I meet people, especially the white people, many times when I meet them, I just come and say, Pastor. I say, you can say, yes, I'm a pastor. Because it has gotten to a state that even before some people, you are even ashamed to call yourself prophet. Because when you are when you engage yourself with, in a conversation with them and you are talking, the moment you call yourself or you made your identity known as a prophet, that moment they are pissed off. They just they, are, they just begin to look for any excuse to to ignore you or to, to to just let you go. They no longer want to have anything doing with you. There are a lot of people like that. And if you still carry that mentality or that school of thought around, when you eventually come across the real prophet that the Lord has sent to deliver you. Because of your own belief in your spirit, in your mind, in your soul, and in your heart, you may lose that opportunity. So I am talking to somebody, disregard your previous experiences, disregard your past experiences, but open your eyes. What do you need to do? Begin to fast and pray. Ask God for the spirit of discernment. That is the way out. You know, I will tell you what to do. How do you, how, how, how do you know? How are you able to identify that this one is fake, this one is true? So that when your angel, when your, when your angel in the form of a prophet, when he eventually comes visiting, so that you will not miss that opportunity, how do you know? Begin to ask God. There is a special spirit that the Bible told, told, told us about. It is called the spirit of discernment, the discerning spirit. When you have a discerning spirit, any prophet that you encounter, something will tell you with 100% conviction if it is if it is true or if it is fake. So, reason number two, why uh, we encounter prophecy failures these days is because of lack of trust and confidence in God's genuine prophets as a result of your previous experiences. Number three, I told you there are seven, so we are gradually coming to an end. Number three reason for prophecy, for, for prophecy failure. To ba ji she fe yon ti o she. On wale ke tato le she le. Kon ti fun yon message. You have a, a big note of prophetic messages or spiritual messages and none has come to manifestation. The third reason, not taking immediate action after the release of prophecy. Inability to take immediate action after the release of prophecy. You know, when you when you receive some prophecy, you have to act like the speed of light. You have to act immediately. I'm speaking to somebody now. We want to read, we want to read the scriptures. I will establish my point from the word of God so that you can accurately understand what we are talking about here. So let us quickly look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 and we look at um, verse 17 to 19. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 
uh, and we are looking at verses 17, 18, and 19 to buttress that point in order to, for you to have a clear-cut understanding of what we are talking about. First Samuel chapter 1, verses 17, 18, and 19, I read, Then Eli answered and said to Anna, this was Anna in Shiloh, Then Eli answered and said to her, Go in peace, and the God of Israel shall grant thee thy petition that thou ask of him. I want to turn that to prophecy for a family. I want to turn that to prophecy to an individual that is watching me now. I don't know what you are passing through. I don't know what you have been praying for. I don't know what you have been fasting for. I don't know what you have been sowing seed for. I don't know the miracle that you have been expecting. But I am ministering to your soul, to your life, and to your destiny now. According to the covenant of God in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17, as from today, go in peace, and the God of Israel shall grant unto thee thy petition in the name of Jesus. After this life broadcast, may the God of Israel, the one that answered Anna, grant unto thee speedily according to your petition in the name of Jesus. I release it the third time for somebody that is expecting urgently expecting a miracle. For a family that is urgently expecting a good news and to my own family as well. I decree in the name of Jesus as from this moment go in peace and the God of Israel shall speedily grant all your petition in Jesus name mighty name. Now, let us look at verse 18. That is where we are going. Let us look at verse 18. And she said, immediately she, re she received that prophecy. Look at what she said. Verse 18. And she said, let thy aunt maid find grace in thy sight. She believed. That is, that is that point. She said, let thy aunt maid Find grace in thy sight. Meaning, she believed. Full stop. So, this is where we are going. So, the woman went away and eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Verse 19. And they rose up early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord God and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Anna, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And the Lord remembered her. And the Lord remembered her. Whether you believe it or not, but because of the reason of the genuine word of God that is coming to you now, I decree in this month, the month of July, the Lord will remember you. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you. In the name of Jesus, concerning this testimony that you have been anticipating, concerning this blessing that you have been praying for, concerning this miracle that you have been expecting, the Lord shall remember you. The Lord shall remember you. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 19 said, and God remembered her. I pray for you. May the Lord remember you. I pray for you. Every Bola, every Janet, every Annette, every Kike, every Olamide, every Eniola, every Olawale, whoever that is watching me right now, may the Lord remember you. In this new month, the Lord shall remember you. The Lord shall remember you. You have been forgotten too long. You have been forgotten for a long time. But this is the word that is sent to you. This is your word. This month of July shall be your month of divine remembrance. The Lord shall remember you for your good. The Lord shall remember your household. Concerning that marriage, the Lord will remember you. Concerning your financial breakthrough, the Lord will remember you. Concerning child bearing, the Lord will remember you to take you out of barrenness. The Lord will remember you. In the name of Jesus, concerning your disobedient child, that boy, that girl of yours that has refused to listen to you, the Lord will remember you in the name of Jesus. Concerning your job, the Lord will remember you. Concerning that visa in this month of July, it will not get to August. The Lord will remember you. Concerning your green card and your citizenship, your permanent residency, the Lord will remember you in the name of Jesus. Oh, you will not die in that condition. You will not die in that sorrow. You will not die in that disappointment. The Lord will remember you. The Lord that remembered Anna shall remember you in the name of Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody? Now, the message 
is in verse 18. Verse 18 is the message. And she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight, meaning she believed. So the woman went away and ate, and her countenance was no more sad. That is action. That is action. That is action. Number three reason. Why a lot of you receive prophecy. They give you prophecy spiritual. 100% genuine spiritual message. And yet, it is not coming to fulfillment. Why? It is inability to take immediate action after the release of that prophecy. Anna had refused to eat because of her predicament. Anna had refused to drink because of her sorrow. Anna had agreed to be living a solitary life. She refused to talk to nobody because of her problem. Everybody was in Shiloh praising God. She went to a corner and be praying. She refused to do anything because of her predicament. She refused to eat. Her countenance was so sad. When you see Anna, you will know that she, she was not happy. You will know that she was sad because of her problem. But the Bible said immediately Eli prophesied into her life. She believed by claiming it that let that grace work for me. Not only claiming it again, the Bible says immediately she looked for food, she ate. She looked for orange juice, she drank. And this is the most important one. Her countenance changed immediately without nobody preaching for her. She believed and she took action. A lot of you, the reason why prophecy is not fulfilled in your life is because when they prophesy into your life, you believe that prophecy, but you still have some doubt inside your heart. You believe the prophecy. You believe that God is a miracle worker. You believe that when professional prays for you, God answers his prayer that you will get results. But yet, you are still sad. But yet, you still refuse to eat. But yet, you are still, you are still cranky. Watching Jack be more quiet. Watching Conor want more and more. Watching Lejul office. What is your dish for me, Tony? When you see all of that, God is disappointed. When you see all of that, you are telling God that He cannot act quickly on your behalf. As a matter of fact, when you are expecting good news from God, the angels that are often sent to deliver good news are joyful angels. And when they are coming to visit you or coming to visit your house, when they say that you are not joyful, when they say sadness in your countenance, they will return back. And be expecting until when you are in the right frame of mind in order for them to operate. Angels of joy cannot operate in a family of sorrow. Angels of joy, angels of glad tidings can never operate in a, in, 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 in a heart of bitterness. In the sixth month, and the Lord sent Holy Gabriel to Mary to deliver good news to her. And when Mary received the good news, she began to sing unto the Lord that the Lord has remembered the humility of uh, uh, his handmaid and has come to reward. She began to sing. That is, she had the good news. She acted by praising God. It cannot come to, to fulfillment. I must speak it to somebody now. So this is the this is the number three reason why prophet gives message and fulfillment is delayed. I deliberately use that choice of word because it came from the mouth of God from genuine prophet. It will come to fulfillment, but that moment it is delayed until you come to common sense. It is delayed. I must speak it to somebody. So. Why thus, or why do prophecy, why is prophecy delayed? Because of not taking immediate action after the release of such prophecy. What are the actions that you and I need to, to take? What are the steps that we need to take when we, release, when we receive prophecy? If you need to fast, immediately they prophesy to your life. If you need to fast, please begin to fast. Some prophecy needs fasting and prayer to quickly come to manifestation. If you need to pray, instantly begin to pray. If you need to hold vigil, listen, listen. You are about 20 in your household. And a prophet came to your family house 
to begin to prophesy. And they single you out that you are the glory of that family. And you say, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for reminding, for remembering me. They single you out. And they prophesy among a family of 28 or among a family of five that you are the glory of that family. You had that prophecy and you kept quiet. Ah! It will be long for the prophecy to come to fulfillment. Because even if your siblings, if your siblings don't go about doing balo, uh, diabolical stops, stuff to you, that one more, yeah, your balance should go see your body. You know You know what? You know what? Ah! Because of their heart, because of the bitterness of their heart, that bitterness will, will encapsulate that prophecy and hinder it to come to fulfillment on time. So, there are some great prophecies. When you release it, go into fasting immediately. Begin to rebuke every bitterness spirit and every demonic influence that may hinder. Go into vigil. Go into fasting immediately. I must speak it to somebody now. I must speak. So, if you need to fast, fast. If you need to pray, pray. Then at that you need to guide your mouth and then obey some specific instructions to the letter and act on the word of God as it is being received. God is not a magician. He plays his part and then you play your part. He is never a magician. He plays his part and then you play your part. How do you play your part? By acting on the word. Action. Add action. To, to your belief, add action to your faith. Number four, because of time. I told you I don't want to waste time. Number four reason for prophecy failure. This is our month of fulfillment. You will encounter 100% of all God's covenant for your life. 100% fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, it did share in your share. It did The number four reason. Why? At times, they may not even give you spiritual message. You dreamt, you saw yourself in the dream that you are great. Or you saw a vision to yourself. Or they saw a vision and, to and tell you. They saw a vision to you. Or they prophesy. And you know that this is a genuine dream, vision, or prophecy. And yet, it is not coming to fulfillment. What could be the reason? Number four. Influence of rival of glory. Ah! Hele lagbara ejen gbewile. Ejen gbewile. This one is deep. Number four reason why they prophesy to the life of a man and it's not fulfilled. Number four, according to what the Spirit of God told me, is what you call influence of rival of glory. Ah, one one they don't just want your glory to shine. They just hate to see you around. It is not that you have misunderstanding with them. It is not that you guys have the uh, argument. No. You are not fighting with them. They are not fighting with you. But anytime they see you and you appear, they are just mad. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We call them rival of glory. They just hate to see you prosper. They just hate to see you do well. How do you know rival of glory? People that envy you for no reason, they are rival of glory. Listen, when you are praying against rival of glory, you command God to kill them. When, when you want to pray against rival of glory, you pray atlas prayer. Rival of glory will not wait until you perish, until you come down, until you encounter shame or you die. Oh... I must speak it to somebody now. The expectation of rival of glory is three. Expect every rival of glory has three expectations. Number one, that you come down, never to rise again. Number two, that you fall from grace to disgrace. Ah. Oh. That you fall from grace to disgrace. Number three, that you die completely. Come at the That is the expectation. That is what you call rival. 
Kosiba she le loto. Kone hundred billion dollar la kant. Kone ku one dollar. That is my own prayer because I know them. Yes. Listen. Kosene to ni orogun ogo. There is nobody that don't have glory rivals. If you claim that you don't have glory rivals, that means you are empty. You don't have glory. And God did not create anybody to be empty. So is it that you have taken your own glory or you have lost it or they stole it from you? Every man that is prospering must have rival glory. How do you identify them? When they envy you for no reason. You please them with everything that you have, yet that will not stop them from envy you. How do you know rival of glory? They wish you bad by speaking evil of you everywhere. Every good things that you do, they will not see it, they will not even talk about it. They always look for your mistake and error. And when they are able to grab one mistake and error, then they begin to spread it. Those are rivals of your glory. Don't make them your friends. You can make them fans. Don't fight with them. Don't make them friends, but let them be your fans. Because if you fight with them, you know what you do? So that when you after your prayer, when you see them in church, hug them. As you are hugging them, they are embracing transformer. You come on at it, yeah. Emi o kimbo rogu o gojao. Hmm hmm. Ma hugi ma tu double level. Kai e de baje dada. Ah, sha 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 sha. Oda boro yinpo julie ni shola. Shebe ya kapariye. Shebe ya kapariye. Be mi alone shem. As, as the Spirit of God is ministering to me, I'm just pouring out. I'm thinking it's getting too much. Maybe we should bring it to an end. I mean, people of God, maybe we should bring it to an end. How do you know them? They are just envious. They speak evil about you. If you, out of ten, if you do nine good, they will not talk about it. But if you make one error, one error out of ten, it is that error that they will put on social media. And then they will begin to broadcast to anybody that cares to listen. They just want you to come down. Those are rivals of glory. Listen, you don't negotiate with rivals of glory. Don't negotiate. Don't let them come closer to you. Don't let them know your house. Because they can hurt you with any simple thing that they are able to, that they are able to lay their hand on. Do you know that no matter how much they settle fight, no matter how much they try to settle fight, make peace reign, between your rival of glory, it will not work. They are rivals of your glory. They hate to see you rise. I'm not speaking to somebody now. How do you identify rival of glory? That hatred will not be limited on you alone. It transfers even to your children, even to your cattle. to any church in the parking lot. I'm not sure because by Kita ya mere ni joko mali lo le bat bubu they ate everything that belongs to you. Your car, your house, your children. If you buy garments, expensive one, they will say, Kilo Kosi, go do one dollar law. Go do one dollar law. Some color at here. Those are what you call rivals of glory. When you allow rivals of glory too much around you, they destroy or they enter the fulfillment of prophecy. Listen, rivals of glory are wicked. And when you are dealing with them spiritually, you have to deal with them mercilessly because they are wicked. If you, if you, if you allow them too much, if you give them too much to operate, they can kill you under one minute. Those are rivals of glory. Among every kinds of enemies that man may encounter, rivals of glory are the most wicked. How? They appear to be your friend. They appear to be your friend. They know what you like. They know your best food. They know your best color. They know your house. They know your address. They know your, uh, the number of your car, your tag number. They know it. They know when you're coming from work. They know when you go out in the morning. They know the time that you sleep because they are closest to you. They are getting close to you, pretending to be your friends because they are seeking for your weak point. They are looking for that, that simple error that you make and will make them to destroy you perpetually. 
So you have to be very careful that there is what we call rivals of glory. They may be richer than you. You may be earning $1,500 per week. Let's just say you are earning $1,500 per week and they are earning $10,000 per week. $1,500 to $10,000. Even with that, your one five and they are earning $10,000, they will still be jealous of your one thousand five. Because they know that you carry grace, that sooner or later, if they allow you, that one thousand five in your hand will soon become one point five million, and then it will multiply their own ten thousand. So they will not stop; they will not rest until they kill you. They don't want that one one thousand five hundred dollar in your hand to become one point five million. So when you are dealing with them, deal with them, not go and fight them. All. Deal with them spiritually in prayer mercilessly. Between now and 40 days, the grave will open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus. So that is what you call life of glory. Yeah, let, let's look at the Bible now. Then we'll prove it from the Bible. When it's now that we are watching Hollywood movie. Matthew chapter 2. From verse 1. Matthew chapter 2. From verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, that is the river, in the days of Herod the king, there will always be an Herod at the days of your reigning. There's nothing you can do about it. Beodia came, wise men from east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born, king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Mumbo. Verse 3 When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. When you have real glory, real glory cannot be eaten. Real glory will advertise and proclaim itself. So, the wise men didn't pray. They just saw that, behold, this is glory. So, no matter how much you try to try to pretend or hide, if you have glory, you cannot hide it. It will advertise itself. So, but when these wise men saw this glory, innocently, they went to tell the king, oh, at last, the Messiah is born. A king is born. And the Bible says, when the Herod, who happens to be the rival of glory of Jesus, had this, he was greatly troubled. But when he told you, whoever that you are telling your good news to, sharing your secret of goodness of God too, and they are not happy. Be careful of them. They are your rivals of glory. They will speak evil of you. Shall I will? King you shall come out America. Who are dying in your journey? You are not with any. You are not with any. King Shall you tell you? They can't tell you. Come on, you are. They will speak evil. But look, we will tell. So no, you want show go. Am I speaking to somebody now? They will speak evil. People that are close to you. I want to bother them. I don't feel bad. People that are close that you call Egbon, 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 and they will go behind you to support your enemy. But when you talk about the bad folk go me at here, bro, keep past on one million bad wife from Kony Galaye in the name of Jesus. But when you talk about the bad folk go to me, but when you talk about the bad folk go to and he's seen us talking about what he's saying, because he's saying the gato, all the work that he's saying, he's going to be fallen in the name of Jesus. Now, let us proceed because I want to quickly share the next point, Jari. They are losers. Verses 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8. Then, Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Inquired of them. Your rival of glory will always be making inquiries about you. One more word here. One more to a jade. One more picture a jade. They will make research about your life. 
They will send your name, write your name, send it to make inquiry, demonic inquiry. They will send your picture. And nowadays that we have social media, picture is that, that we have social media. Picture is very easy. You are hiding. Hey, don't snap a picture. Ah, you don't know what you are doing. Even as a ministry now, life, you can take my picture through your screen now. But whoever that sends my picture or your picture for evil, bo, bo say your picture ya bai or no ma pao jue de fun ikuni. In the name of Jesus, I must speak it to somebody now. He make enquiry, stylishly making enquiry from the wise men about Jesus. Verse 8, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you are finally, bring the word again to me that I may come to worship him also. He wrote a lumpa. He's a liar. He's a liar. Verse 13, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, arise. A lot of you, you have jo you are joke with the Arise. The angel of the Lord told Joseph, he said, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring the world, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Herod will seek the young child. The young child that is being talked about here was Jesus, so, to destroy him. <laughs> uh, verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. This was Jesus. There arose a rival of glory unto Jesus. God did not say oh, it was because it was Jesus that leave him there. If they left Jesus there, rival of glory will kill him because he was a baby. He was a baby. He carried the, the, the promise as a baby. He carried the anointing, but the anointing is yet to be activated. A lot of you too, you are babes in spiritual warfare. The grace is on your head. The anointing is there. But it has not yet been activated. You have to flee. Don't make friends with your herald. Don't make friends with the rival of your glory. Because if you, if you allow them too much, if you allow them too much, they will kill you. They took Jesus by night and they ran away to Egypt. And they tarried there in Egypt until the river of glory died. Egbo, orogun ogote enyo bale damu enyo man safunio. The rival of glory that you cannot encounter and fight alone, one on one, what do you do? You run away. <laughs> like a brother preached this weekend, there are some spiritual battles, you don't need to fight them. Bobo jakole enyo manja, some fight, koba tiberebae, and you know that you cannot handle, koba taeko salo. So, some rival of glory are so wicked, they can go to any land. So, when you see them, run away, relocate, leave them. But as much as you try to avoid them, if they are still trying, trailing you to bring you down, it is on that assignment to bring you down that they will die, that they will perish. In the name of Jesus. So when you are, when you allow rivals of glory too much around you, they prevent fulfillment. If not for the glory of God and the life of Jesus as a baby, uh, the fulfillment of that covenant may be delayed. Now, had it been, it was in the uh, uh, covenant, it was in the destiny of Jesus that as a baby, it would have been manifested. Cut and walk but the fact that they took him to Egypt, the period that he was taken out of his place of manifestation, he will not be able to do anything. The, the, the prophecy will not be fulfilled. It will be delayed at that time. So rival of glory delays fulfillment. They can't destroy it because they are not the one that created your glory. They cannot destroy it because they didn't give you that glory. But they can delay it. And if you are not careful, 
Or if your hand is not strengthened in prayer, they can destroy it. May your glory not be destroyed. May mine not be destroyed. May our glory not be destroyed. Prophet prayer, do a meta account. I want to cut three prayer points because the time is far spent. I, I may not, not, not even I may, I will not be able to give us the entire seven today. But to the glory of God, I have given us four of reasons why prophecy is being delayed. By the special grace of God, on Thursday, 12 noon, by the grace of God, we will continue from there. I will give you the remaining three and then we we'll begin to look at what is fulfillment. When you know the meaning of fulfillment, then uh, you will take prayer seriously. To bate mo tu mo tan pe ni mo se de adura makai lara o ni fa adura se de mo tori pe o wo nu abe se ni pe ogbo egbodo de mi se you begin to see that your glory must come to manifestation so next on Thursday by the special grace of God on this platform at 12 noon i will release the three other reasons to us and then we begin to talk about fulfillment if this is your first time watching voice of authority can you please signify i want to pray for you specially I want to release three prayer points for everybody to pray now. But if this is your first time on VOA, can you please quickly signify under one minute, I want to prophesy into your life. And while you are doing that, if you press your screen at the right bottom corner of your screen, you will see a command that says follow. Please click it. When you click follow, it will turn to following. So if you click follow, it will turn to following. Just leave it like that. It means you are now a follower of VOA on Facebook. So that and then after the program, just click on the page by which we are doing this live broadcast. When you click, then you when you click it, then you follow this page or you like rather. You click like. So when you click like, anytime I come online, Facebook will automatically alert you that we have started the program so that you don't miss it. Somebody is talking. I've been born a Koleo show. This is your first time. And we are talking about fulfillment. This is, you came at the right time. You came at the time we are talking about fulfillment. Antonia Olukemi Aloba, you came at the right time. I am decreeing, prophesying as God's own ordained prophet into the life of Abimbola Koleosho. Antonia Olukemi Aloba, Olushola Okwola, I decree. Every covenant of God for your life, every promises of God for your life that is yet to come to fulfillment by the reason of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let it begin to come to fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Covenant of joy, covenant of joy before you. I command it to come to manifestation. Antonia Olukemi Aloba. prophecy. Antonia Olukemi Aloba. That wicked and that is postponing your day of joy. You are approaching the date. As 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 soon as you are approaching, it's like something is pushing it forward. As soon as you are about to apprehend, it's like something is postponing it. Every evil hand that is postponing, shifting forward, your day of glorification, let them wither. In the name of Jesus, let them wither. You are like a salt in your family. In the family you came out from, you are like a salt. Nobody ever expected saltiness of this magnitude in that home. But the Lord willingly deposited saltiness, sweetness in your life. I decree your saltiness will not turn to sour. In in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Jesus, for this.